What's going on, smart people? I just put out a post in my community tab talking about this nuclear physics winter school program I'll be attending in just a couple weeks. And I realized the information I shared is probably not the most helpful if you're not already familiar with nuclear physics and all the jargon and Jesus, the acronyms. So I wanted to put together a quick video going through the program where I kind of speculate what I think the lectures I'll be sitting through are gonna entail. Now this is the second uh, school program I'll be attending outside of graduate school itself. I'm in my fourth year of my PhD. The first school that I attended was called the Hugs Program and it was a nuclear physics summer school in Virginia that I went to last summer. Such a great experience, so I have high hopes for this one. Now let's take a look at the program. So it's called the TMD Winter School, and we'll get into what TMD, acronym number one already, uh, we'll get into what that represents. It's sponsored by the TMD Collaboration. Uh, it's going to be in Santa Fe. It's an in-person um, they say they invite, P this is what I think is kind of interesting, we invite PhD students and early postdocs doing their research in QCD, which is quantum chromodynamics, that's our theory of the strong force, so you have gravity, electromagnetism, and then the weak and the strong nuclear force. Nu strong nuclear force tells us all about how quarks and gluons interact with each other and what holds the proton together. Uh, so QCD, that's all in QCD. Collider physics, hadron structure, so hadron being one example being the proton, so structure of the proton, broadly related to the physics of transverse momentum dependent distributions. That's actually what TMD stands for, transverse momentum dependent. To tackle such open problems as 3D hadron structure, so again, a three-dimensional picture of the proton, if that's what helps you think of this thing, Proton spin, which is always a fun topic to talk about, we like to ask, why does the proton have spin one half? And the naive, simple answer, you got two up quarks, one down quark, one half plus one half minus one half gives you one half, gives you the spin of the proton. Very intuitive picture, but it's, it's not right. It's an incorrect picture. Experiments demonstrated that, so that I think in the 80s, they used to call it the proton spin crisis. Like where does the proton get its spin from? And since then, people have, I guess, calmed down with age. But, and then the last thing, properties of strongly interacting matter. So, properties of quarks and gluons. Okay, working knowledge of quantum field theory is a prerequisite to maximally benefit from the school. Uh, I could see that. that. That would make total sense. If it's anything like the Hugs program, which had, uh, and it, it probably is, because I've seen one of the lectures that's going to be presented on QCD, that shit was not, um, it was not surface level, very technical. Page one was talking about generators of SU3. So if you don't know QFT, then you definitely probably don't know the group theory. Uh, so I think that that's probably a reasonable prerequisite, even though it sounds pretty intimidating. Uh, we anticipate the TMD collaboration will be able to support lodging. Okay, yeah, we are traveling there, it's in person. We're all gonna be super careful. COVID exists, yes. That's not why you clicked on the video. Expected lecturers and topics include. This is what I'm interested in. What are we actually going to be learning? Uh, one thing that I do want to point out is that these lectures that you're seeing here, it's not one and done. Some of these will be three-part lectures, some of them two-part, but it's not just going to be the one thing and then moving on to the next lecture necessarily. So the first one is going to be on introduction to QCD. And it's by the same uh, the same physicist who I who gave the lecture on QCD at the Hugs program, and it was very technical in my opinion. Um, but it, it let us show or it showed us what was really out there in QCD, I think. And it's kind of humbling because the theory that came before that quantum electrodynamics is like something a child could do compared to QCD. It's very humbling to see like all the time and effort that takes to get into understanding doing a calculation in quantum electrodynamics and then going to QCD and realizing those skills only transfer over to an extent because it's just so much more complicated. You know, maybe it would be useful to go over how all of this stuff fits together schematically first before I just talk about all the lectures. So here I just Googled basically what I knew I was looking for, an ancestry tree of sorts of uh, these objects we encounter in nuclear physics. And at the bottom, you get the really nice, intuitive, physical, observable that we all know and love, something like charge, a, a density that we know about charge, magnetic moments, uh, momentum, angular momentum. All of that stuff is at the bottom. And as we work our way up the ladder, we get to more general functions that contain that information, but we have to work for it a little bit. 
So we get things that are more general and more technical, but as a result, you can answer typically more than just one question. What is the charge density? Maybe a couple questions. Maybe you don't just want to know about like, when I'm hitting a quark inside of a proton, what was the fraction of the momentum carried by that quark in the direction of motion by the proton? That's a very specific question, but maybe we'd also like to know about transverse components perpendicular to the beam direction, uh, how that stuff is distributed. So as we work our way up this ladder, we get access to those additional questions as well. Now my world is all centered around the right side of this tree. The densities like charge, their Fourier transform, loosely speaking, which is form factors, and then if you undo a certain kind of integral, you get to what are called generalized parton distribution functions. Uh, and that's what my life is about 40 to 50% centered around. It's all about that stuff. And I'm more so interested in how things like pressure is distributed inside of the proton. But you can always ask, all of those questions have to do with properties of the proton and how you get properties of the proton from the properties of its constituents. So it all contains, it all contributes to structural information of the proton or the nucleus, whatever we're looking at. But if you go up the left side of the ladder, we go from charge to parton distribution functions, which are still related to GPDs, which is cool. So I'm also familiar with these. But we start going up this way to the transverse momentum dependent distributions. You see it depends on k perp, this perpendicular component of the momentum. Uh, so it gives you access to that kind of information. But this is also something I'm very ignorant about. I do not know much about TMDs, hence why I'm going to a TMD school. Very nice. Uh, you go even farther up, you get to like Wigner functions, generalized transverse momentum dependent distributions. This is actually my advisor, that's, or one of my old advisors. That's actually pretty cool to see. I don't work with these much. However, I've had to use papers whose purpose was to describe these more super general objects, these GTMDs. Uh, but if you take the right limits, do the right integrals, you can get to GPDs from them because it's more general. Uh, so I was mostly using these papers as a means of like checking the GPDs that I was calculating. But anyways, so that's kind of a flow chart. I'll probably show it a bunch of times as I'm vlogging about this TMD school. And I'm sure I'll see it just as many times as I'm attending the actual lectures because it tends to be a crowd favorite. But maybe the big point I should be making with the little that I do know about uh, TMDs is they contain information about not just the longitudinal momentum of the target but the transverse components as well. It's a compromise with GPDs because instead of longitudinal you get and uh, k perp you get the impact parameter so you're you're trading off momentum information for spatial information in a sense. But going back to the program so we have intro to QCD that's going to be tough. I'm so glad that it's not just one lecture. It wasn't le one lecture for hugs either but it just makes it so much more digestible knowing that this stuff is going to be spaced out a little bit and we'll take a look at the schedule in just a couple minutes. Intro to TMDs. Since the next one is uh, experimental, maybe this one will be more theory driven and like TMDs at the operator level or something, I'm not sure. Uh, then we've got some something for the lattice people. Um, let's see, do I understand that enough to explain it at all? So my research, whenever I do look at QCD, which is not much, my stuff is more so focused on very simpler models, but um, if I do calculations, I'm mostly concerned with areas where certain approximations are very appropriate at certain energies. And if you go to smaller energies, those approximations are not as valid, but we still want to understand the physics there. So that's where taking a different approach as opposed to uh, perturbative applications to QCD, one may do a more exact approach uh, on a lattice, lattice QCD, using, say, the Feynman path integral. So I, there's, a, there's a couple students at NMSU where I go who are probably going to be stoked for these lectures. And I, I always get something out of them as well because I don't know much about Lattice QCD. Then we have the famous G from G's sum rule talking about how we can add GPDs together to get how and integrate to get how uh, angular momentum is distributed inside of the proton. Spin is a very, very touchy subject in nuclear physics for the proton. Uh, soft collinear effective theory and TMD evolution and we have this effective theory whenever I hear effective field theory my naive mind immediately goes to you just didn't want to say non renormalizable didn't you but I know that there's so much more to it because experiments take place at certain scales and whatnot so that doesn't need to be valid at all at, at beyond what it's you being used for so I, I'm I'm growing to appreciate effective field theories more but I still think they're funny. 
Uh, Matthias Burkhardt, that's my other research advisor, who's going to be giving a talk on GPDs and orbital angular momentum. So he was actually one of the people who gave the interpretation of what GPDs represent, how it's describing how uh, how the quark that you're hitting is distributed in uh, like transverse position space, so like the impact parameter, so to speak, as well as the longitudinal distribution of the momentum. So. He, in a sense, it's a three-dimensional picture of the proton with an asterisk on there because one of those pieces of information isn't spatial, it's, it's momentum. But still, uh, even though we could extract physical things from GPDs, people didn't know what it represented itself. Then we've got TMDs at small x. x is not a position, by the way, it's actually a momentum fraction, so it's related to the fraction of the, uh, the quark's momentum that you're hitting to the total proton momentum. There's additional, we can make it more complicated if we want to, but it's related to a momentum fraction. TMDs and jets, TMDs and dense matter, now we're getting into things that I know so little about, I can't even pretend to explain it. But the fact that this stuff is on primarily TMD physics, which I know so little about, is, is really nice and good timing because at the Hugs program, I went into it saying, I want to be exposed to what other people are doing in nuclear physics, which was the case at times, but there were also a lot of lectures that were uh, pretty closely related to my own research, like the experimental lectures were on deeply virtual Compton scattering, which is the avenue of accessing GPD information, so that's right up my alley, whereas here, if they're talking about experiments for TMDs, it's going to be focusing on deep and elastic scattering, probably, which I also know less about, but during hugs, I was less equipped to understand what you know my colleagues and my peers were learning in the first place. So now that I've had that summer school under my belt and about another year, half a year of you know formally learning more about QFT and modern nuclear physics, I think I can actually handle learning what other people are doing. So I'm really excited for this. Let me know in the comment section which of these lectures look the most interesting to you. Uh, one thing I should probably note is that in my application to this program, I asked if I would be if it would be okay if I were to record the experience, like vlog vlog the experience, and they responded uh, kind of by hiring me to record the lectures themselves as well. So I will have the lectures. It's I don't know what they will plan to do with them. If there will be a repository that's for the students or if it's for the general public, I'm not sure. But as I find out inf that information, I'll be sure to let everyone know. So thank you for watching. I'm real excited for this winter program. Excited to make some videos on it again because I've been slacking. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys there.